Lieutenant Colonel Paul Littlefield plugged his ears with two fingers as a BL 55 inch field artillery gun a few yards away launched an ear splitting projectile over a long, wide field and across the Rapido River. It targeted a German troop position in Castelforte, a village spilling from the foothills of a mountain in the Apennine Range onto flatter ground stretching a thousand yards to the river's north bank. The gun's piercing concussion shook the ground as its barrel spewed fire and lurched upward before it settled in a cloud of dust on its large rubber tires. Paul watched the crew as a soldier yanked open the breech and let the brass casing fall out. Two more men sweating under the heavy load of the next projectile on a canvas cradle between them. Man handled the round into the tube, while the third man shoved it into the chamber with a long rammer. Yet another tossed in several small packets of propellant, while a fifth set the charge. The first man slammed the breach shut, grabbed the lanyard, and glanced at the battery commander standing a few feet away. The officer dropped his hand and yelled, Fire! With only seconds having passed since the previous salvo, the gunner pulled the lanyard. Flame belched in concert with a line of identical artillery guns, all aimed toward the tiny village three miles away. The ground trembled and the air exploded with terrible thunder. The heavy guns bounced into the air from the force of their launches, and they settled down amid acrid swirls of gun smoke and dust. The crews hurried through their actions for the next barrage. Paul shifted his attention to watch the inevitable eruptions of dirt and debris that would arise from Castelforte. As his eyes swept past the gun, Two clucking chickens with wings flapping scurried between him and the gun crews. Then, on a road just feet in front of the upward slanting barrel of the artillery piece, Paul caught sight of a bent, swarthy man in wrinkled clothing and a worn-out fedora, leading a firewood-laden donkey. The two paused momentarily. The man stared vacantly at the gun and crew, and then proceeded past them. 